the thicker you go on the end kind of depends on how long you hold that button down and how fast you move the paint. I don't know if that makes any sense. It sounds good though. It really does. It sounds like I know what I'm talking about. I don't though. I am a full on complete amateur. I am finally pretty excited to be able to work on the grill of the CJ7 that I purchased a few weeks ago. And if you don't know, here it is. And I've done a bunch of paint correction on it, uh, got it all shined up again. Uh, and it looks pretty good. It's not going to look perfect. It probably needs a full paint job and restoration to be perfect, but we're not doing that. We're going to get it back on the road, make it look nice and enjoy it. Um, and then probably sell it and pick up something else to do similar stuff to. But I have been busy trying to, uh, I guess, right the wrong on some of these things. I, I had to fix a valve cover. I put all new hoses on it, water pump, uh, thermostat, a lot of maintenance items and things to that extent that it needed. Um, and then going through everything after we cleaned up the paint. I just couldn't live with the fenders and the grill being as tore up as they are. So that's what we're finally being able to get to because once that's done, we can start putting it back together and then we can look at getting it on the road. So I'm finally glad to be here. Here's the hood in case you guys hadn't seen it yet. Um, but I'm finally able, uh, very glad to be at the position now to where we can get this, um, grill all cleaned up now previously it had this aftermarket chrome grill on it now my jeep is a base model jeep as far as i know it's not a laredo it's not a renegade it doesn't have the center surround it doesn't have the rocker panel moldings and things like that that those vehicles are supposed to have so i'm 99 percent sure this is an aftermarket piece and it's rusty and it looks like crap and it's there's no chrome on the Jeep other than these cheap wheels that are on it. So let's not put, let's not put any more chrome on it. Um, another thing that I didn't explain is I had to take the windshield off and fix areas of rust um, and then fix the windshield frame itself, which is a long story. You can, you can go back and look uh, in the, in the playlist and see how I fixed that. I had, I had to weld some nuts on, uh, bolts to get them out and things to that extent, but we got it done. We got it rest treated. So that's ready to go on, but I need to get the front end all on it first before I put the windshield on. So, all right, there, I'm, I'm babbling already. So what we're going to do now is, uh, this thing was obviously towed behind a motor home or it just, just got a lot of, uh, pain afflicted upon it from rocks and gravel and things to that extent that the front end of this was pretty, pretty bad. And, you know, there was a possibility of maybe trying to buff it all out, but not with all of these stone chips and stuff like that. So I think what we're going to have to do is hit it pretty hard with a sanding disc. Um, and I actually have these 150 Diablo sanding discs here, um, 150 grit that I'm going to throw on my DA polisher which is not necessarily the best recommended thing to do, but we're going to do it. I've done it before and it, it does kind of work. And then when we're done, we're going to uh, get some high build primer on it. So it fills in any kind of cracks to that extent. And then we're going to use this stuff here from automotive touchup.com. This place, you can go to their website. You can find your code for your car, your paint code. Our Jeep happens to be a uh, 1B which is a moonlight blue one-year color, 1981 CJ7. And, uh, well, they send you a pre-mixed, pre-colored, the whole nine yards uh, paint 
you know, the correct paint uh, in a spray can. And then you can order a, a can of clear and you lay your player, your, you lay your layers on and then you clear it. And then this stuff winds up looking fantastic. And here's an example. These are the hinges, aftermarket hinges. Well, they're not aftermarket. They are used hinges I bought from eBay um, and they were not blue, but now they match pretty much exactly the color of the truck like it's supposed to. You're going to have fading and things to that extent where, you know, it's going to be a little off, but uh, not bad for a couple hundred bucks. So two cans of base, two cans of clear run about a hundred bucks with shipping. So um, just be aware of that. But um, it's a lot, lot cheaper than taking it someplace and having it done. And on a vehicle that we're working on like this, that's that's overkill. Uh, it might be uh, appropriate in some uh, cases, but not for us in this. All right, so let me get that DA polisher ready to go, and we'll sand out a little bit of this and show you how we're going to do it. And then, um, yeah, we'll get we'll get started. So, okay, here we go. Step one of this, my orbital polisher which is not really a sander and i think you're supposed to use a sander i have just gotten away with using this in the past so i'm going to use it again uh, this is a hook and loop uh sanding disc and uh well it works pretty good uh you're definitely supposed to have these aeration holes and stuff like that and i don't know exactly why but i'm sure they're there for a reason and i don't have that and this is an old buffer wheel that i have ruined with a different pad so or maybe even a standard so put the old buffer wheel on there um yeah we're just gonna kind of go after it at oh i don't know 4800 rpm How's that going? Pulls a lot of paint off pretty quick. What I'm trying to do is just kind of get this as smooth as I can without just going too far into the metal like that. Um, if I can feel it, I might try to go over it just a little bit more, but that's all I'm looking to do on this. I'm not, not trying to go overboard on it, so. few minutes with that sander i'm pretty happy with it i might come back down here just a little bit more but these parts are pretty low because they've been hit pretty hard but big areas here are nice and somewhat flat here um not really feeling a whole bunch of this stuff anymore a little bit right there maybe uh but it doesn't have to be perfect we're not doing a show quality paint job here we're doing a Make it look nice to go back on the front of the uh, Jeep again. Paint job is what we're doing. So I'll probably hit it just a little bit more and then uh, we'll get it all cleaned up. I will probably pressure wash this thing inside and out. Um, and then prep the fenders here in a second. And we will all get ready to start maybe spraying some paint on tomorrow or maybe later tonight. We'll see. We'll see. See how much I get done. So before we can do anything as far as laying paint down, which I'm not, I want to pressure wash this thing. Well, I'm going to take this red uh, scuffing pad. You can get them at O'Reilly's. Um, it's like equivalent to 360 um, grit sandpaper. And in order for paint to stick really well, it really likes a good, like, 300 to 500 um, 
grit surface, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go over this thing with this red scuffing pad and go over the fenders, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. They're ready. And then I'm gonna wash everything off really, really good and we'll get started on painting. But this is a very necessary step uh, just to make sure that when we do put paint and primer on it, it does adhere. What do you think? We're done, right? No, we're not done. You guys know that. But I got the uh, grill all masked up and uh, ready to final clean and paint. And I did the same for the fenders over here. So let's come take a look at that. I've got the uh, fenders all sanded down. Um... Uh, Masked off as good as it needs to be. I don't care too much about these tires at all, so that's not going to bother me none. Uh, but I sanded um, here, got all those chips and stuff out of it, most of I could. Of course, you're going to have some other ones in here. Remember, this is not the best paint job in the world. Said it like 300 times, but uh, we should be able to primer this, all this stuff pretty well. And then I will kind of fade off the primer when we come out here. I sanded back here a little bit because I'm going to try to fade a little. We'll see if that, how well we get, we'll see how well that comes out is what I'm trying to say. Uh, my suspicions about this fender were correct. This is, this fender's been body worked. This is Bondo. That's original primer and metal. So yeah, this has been body worked um, and probably painted. Same setup though. We're pretty much ready to go. Now, this is probably going to be pretty fast and heavy, and I don't know how detailed I'm going to be able to get on the mic, but here's the process, and uh, maybe we'll walk it through it while I'm doing it on a time lapse. But we are going to use spray away glass cleaner to final clean the surface. So we're going to do that. This has alcohol in it. It dries fast. It dries clean. It gets rid of all of any grease and stuff that's still left on it. Um, one thing I didn't show you guys is when I cleaned the fenders, I got some little bit of dish soap, very small amount, and some hot water, and I put it in a spray bottle, and I sprayed everything down and gave it its first clean. Then we're going to do the same things with this. We're going to use the spray away cleaner and clean it all down, and then we're going to start priming. Um, I'm going to be using some Rust-Oleum filler primer which is kind of like what it says it's going to do. It's going to fill in some of the low spots and stuff like that. Hopefully, um, this stuff apparently dries to the touch in 10 minutes. Now we're in Houston where the humidity is probably 85% today. So I don't think that that's going to happen, but it will still probably dry pretty quick. And it says that uh, once it's dried to the touch, we can go ahead and start laying color down. So it's probably going to be pretty fast and heavy. And, uh, We'll see what we uh, get done as far as recording it. But um, yeah, let me go ahead and at least show you guys on the grill the process of that. And then we'll probably time lapse the fenders. I think that probably will be the best uh, way to do it. When it comes to this stuff, all I do is read the directions. And when you do that, you usually wind up with a pretty good result. So I'm going to spray this stuff on two or three coats, depending on how it looks after two. Um, I'm going to wait about five to seven minutes in between coats for the primer, and then we're going to move on to the paint. So, yep, let's, uh, let's get started. Definitely not rocket science. Spray, make sure you get all your areas. I'm sweating, so I'm going to try to back up and not get it on the grill. The time has come. Well, this display is on pretty thick. Probably should turn that fan off. Well, 
Now, I'm going to do that a couple more times. I'll save you the uh, <clears throat> the waiting on it. <laughs> we'll come back when we're ready to spray it with color. Let's get a middle of the paint job update. First of all, I don't like the high bill primer. I don't like it at all. I don't think I would use this stuff again. Um, I just, I don't care for it. I, I like the 2K primer, which looks like this. It seems to act a whole lot better. Only bad thing is you really have to let that stuff dry overnight before you paint it, or at least that's what it says. Um, I have actually put 2K primer over this because I didn't like the other stuff. It seems to pill up a bunch, um, and I don't know why that is. I, I guess it's because it's high build primer. I have decided that we're going to go ahead and go forth with the uh, painting of the grill. We're going to go ahead and get it done tonight because I don't know when I'm going to have some extra time, even though I think I just cut my toe open. I did. I did. It's bleeding. That's good. Um, yeah, so why don't we just... Uh, Take a look at this whole thing. We'll go from there. So I'll try to walk you through the process at least once at a time. Um, this is the automotive touch-up base coat color. Again, I gave them my 1B uh, paint code for the Jeep. So you can give them your factory paint code. It's not factory. I don't know what to tell you. But, um, you know, for the first coat... It's just a light coat. You don't get over zealous with it. Don't worry about all the cracks yet. Just get it on. And it'll help kind of make a tacky base for your next coats. There we go. One thing I have a problem with is figuring out how far away my can is to the paint. And sometimes I touch it, so I'm trying to make that not be a problem. If you notice, this looks a whole lot lighter when put on first. And that's okay. And there we go. Man, how bad is that thing bleeding? That's not that bad. Okay. All right. So, first coat is on. We've got probably at least four, maybe five more to go. And it's time for the second coat. What I like to do is kind of rub off the nozzle if I can. Shake it up real good. Lay this one on a little thicker than the first. Not a whole lot though. And then we're going to try to get some areas we didn't get. Ooh. It's not going well. There we go. I may try something a little risky. How's this going to work? This might be the way to go. I'll show you guys in a second. Let me get this part done. Wow. It definitely does spray better on a horizontal plane than it does on a vertical plane. I'm going to have to be very careful to not drop this because this has got disaster written all over it. I'm going to tilt it up some. This grill is pretty difficult to paint. I will admit. But coverage is pretty good. 
We're definitely not taking as much paint as we did for the fenders. So, another 10 minutes. I think I'm going to classify that can as dead. There's really not anything left in it, and I don't want splatters and things to that extent. So we're going to retire this can. Maybe we'll hit the corner down here. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to use that. So, another 10 minutes, and then another coat. Not too hard so far, right? Biggest thing is prep, making sure it's clean, which I screwed up on because I forgot to wipe this down with the uh, glass cleaner on the primer before I started spraying. So, don't be like me and remember that. Little tip, if you've got a LED light, let me blind you guys with that. It's a good way to see where you have light spots. And you'll see the light spots right there on the ribs, a couple other areas. So we're going to hit this with one more go around. Try to get a little thicker on the ribs. And then hopefully... Bob's your uncle? I think that's the saying. I don't know. It's probably not the saying, to be honest with you. But let's see if we can carefully do this one more time. Oh, yeah, big time. The thicker you go on the end, kind of depends on how long you hold that button down and how fast you move the paint. I don't know if that makes any sense. It sounds good though. It really does. It sounds like I know what I'm talking about. I don't though. I am a full on complete amateur. All right, that may be it, folks. Let's put this thing back down. Let it dry up. And we shall see. We shall see. Here we go. We've been dry for about an hour now. Looking pretty good. You know, again, this isn't the perfect paint job. There's going to be nicks and scratches and stuff because, well, we're just not going that detail. But it's going to be a whole lot better than it was. Um, let's go look at the fenders because I just got done putting the last coat of clear on these guys. And, whoo, boy, looks good. Looks really, really good. Again, not perfect. Not perfect. But good. So that's a whole lot better than it was when we started. So I will take it now. It's time to uh, time to put some clear on the grill. Now the clear. It's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if I can show you guys on camera, but it has to blend in with itself. And you can basically see it if it's like foggy. Well, it's not, it's not on thick enough. You need, you need to go back over it again. But what you have to do with this, again, this is from AutomotiveTouchUp.com. Not sponsored. I spent $200 on paint. This is a $200 paint job, you know, at least for these parts. But um, what I'm getting at is it's, it's not a bad solution for the price. And, uh, well, this stuff, you have to wait 15 minutes in between coats. So, be patient, set yourself up, get ready to go, and, uh, you know, find something to do to track your time in between. But we're going to spray this on. You can kind of see it almost turns white 
sometimes. It goes quick though. Just FYI. All right, probably going to do that four more times. Are you looking pretty glossy, huh? Looking pretty glossy already. It's supposed to, but four more coats of that. And then we're going to call it for tonight. And we're going to let this stuff sit for 24 hours before we touch it. Especially down here where it's humid as heck. So, um, yeah. Let me do it. Let me do it four more times. It's the same process. I'm going to wait 15 in minutes in between coats. And when I'm done, I'll come back to you. I don't need to show you this three more times. Uh, see you in a little bit. Are you all ready for this? Are you, are you ready? Four coats of clear are on. The grill looks great. Looks pretty good. Not bad for a. Wednesday night, a lot, lot of time commitment. And yeah, I could have stripped this thing down and made it straight and all that jazz. And um, I mean, they're, you know, it's in good enough shape to do that, but there's no reason to do that on this Jeep. I mean, look at the hood. It shines, but it's got some, you know, it's got some defects. So, you know, we're not going after perfect. We're going after pretty good. And I'm really, really happy with this stuff. Um, and again, like on a real flat piece of metal, it comes out fantastic. So, you know, I could wet sand that and get it super, super, super shiny, but we're not doing that. Um, so for tonight, I'm done. I've got to, I've touched those things before and messed them up uh, when they weren't ready. So I learned my lesson to leave this stuff cure for about 24 hours. So I won't touch any of this stuff probably until tomorrow's July 4th. I'll probably leave it all alone and come back to life this and kind of look at it and clean it all up. So I let this thing sit for about, oh, it's probably been 28 hours or whatever, basically all day yesterday and then some over the night. Um, so let's take a look at it, right? Here we go. Yeah, paint's all dry. Looks pretty good. Color match is on point. Color match looks really, really good. However, if you guys can see, it's kind of shiny for sure, right? It's kind of shiny. And, uh, well, it's not bad. And I could leave it like that and be just fine. However, down here with our humidity levels, they're, the, all the what they call orange peel or whatever else you want to call it, there's a lot of that here because it doesn't lay flat, I think, because of the humidity. So it never, like, flattened out. Um, and this is good, but it's very, very obvious I painted it. However... I wasn't going to take this extra step, but uh, 
I took an extra step. What do you think? A little different, right? Yeah. This thing looks amazing. So, I'm glad I took that extra step. And that extra step is basically just what they call color sanding or wet sanding. So, take a sander, you want a flat one, some paper, and uh, I just brought my paper out somewhere. There it is. I bought this uh, these sheets of paper, sanding paper, off of Amazon. It's got like 120 through 3,000. Um, so I sanded, took paper from here. I did a first coat, uh, first um, sand of 1,000 grit sandpaper, and then I went over it with 1,500, and then I polished it out with some compound in my wheel here. And boy, does it look awesome. Now, the best thing about this is I didn't do that great of a job. There's like a low spot here, as you can see, and another one over. This was a high spot, some stuff like that. But what's perfect about that is it matches the rest of the Jeep. So it's not going to stick out like crazy um, when, once you get it in the sun and get the Jeep all cleaned up. So this is a perfect, perfect project to learn this on. So for 200 bucks, we're going to have this front end repainted shiny again it's going to match the rest of the jeep as far as patina wise and uh that's going to be great so uh i'm going to get set up over here on the second side i'm going to show you the process on the top of the fender and uh show you how we do that and then um i'll get these fenders done i'm thinking about maybe doing the flat parts of the grill i don't know yet because it might tear up my uh wheel so i'm worried about these points and things here but I might do it to the grill too but like I said just kind of the flat surfaces I'm not going to go over bearing on it but how cool is that so pretty happy pretty pretty happy now you do have to wait till this stuff is crazy dry you try to do this on some soft paint you're going to have some issues but this was worth the effort this morning it took me about an hour to do this and uh can't complain. And I even went back and buffed out the rest of this fender. It all matches pretty well. I haven't had it in the sun, so that could change. But pretty good. An awesome color. Moonlight blue. How about that? So let's get set up over here, and uh, I'll show you the process. All right, here we go. This is just some little bit of soap dish soap like from your kitchen and a lot of water mixed up spray it on the panel that we're going to sand pretty liberally and then you definitely need a sanding pad um, again i'm an amateur but even i'm an amateur i use a sanding pad when it comes to this kind of stuff because you want to keep it as even as possible so i've got a thousand grit sandpaper I don't know if you guys can see that. Just take my word. 1,000 grit sandpaper loaded up in here. And we're just going to wet sand this thing. I'm not going to overkill it. But we're going to do our best to try to get up to the edges. And not a lot of pressure. I've been having a problem with this guy, though. Not the best uh, sanding pad I've ever used. Come on now. Work with me. Maybe I'll go sideways for a little while. <laughs> all right. So all we're doing is pulling all that high orange peel off. Be really careful on the corners because the corners usually have a thinner amount of paint. But I'm sand a little bit and sand a little bit more. And I'll try to do this one in real time. I might speed up my next passes for you guys to not bore you to death but it doesn't need a whole whole lot and i do this in sections because that's just what makes sense um, and after your first pass you'll find some low spots where you need to kind of concentrate some more on and uh you know come on now 
let me pause and fix this. A little bit more water. And yeah, just kind of hit it evenly as possible. Again, not a whole lot of fresh air. We're not trying to sand to metal. <laughs> we just want to sand a little bit of the clear coat off to make it flat. And this is where I kind of blended back. Again, kind of being easy on the corners. I just work, you know, one spot at a time. So now, let's wipe it off. Oh no, you ruined your paint job, right? And there we go. So, I can see that I have, move y'all, some low spots here because you can still see some of that but this nice smooth surface is kind of what we're looking for so i got a low spot here and i got a low spot here um and a little bit more to finish up back here so i'm going to come back pretty carefully and just hit these spots until they look better and then uh and then we'll hit it with uh, 2000 grit i think yeah yeah 2000 so if i said 1500 earlier I was wrong. So at the end of the day, what it comes down to is the more the level the surface is, the better it shines. So that's why we start with like 5,000 for this, move to 2,000. If you went to 3,000, it would shine even more. But, uh, right, we're not going for that with this Jeep. We've already talked about this 70,000 times in this project. But this, you know, it should, should be relevant to any project you're working on that's kind of got a patina style which in my opinion right now is the best thing to do because it's so expensive to paint something so expensive i'm going to pay 200 maybe 250 dollars in materials with sandpaper to get this done and a paint job for this jeep or at least on the front of it i bet would be probably a, you know, front forward, I don't, with labor, 3,500 bucks or so. So, you know, it is what it is. See what we got. I bet we're done now. I bet we're done. That works. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to save you guys. I'm going to hit back over here again. And I'm not going to keep it in real time anymore because it's taking a little bit of time. you got to be patient. But you guys probably get the point. Um, and then I'm going to hit it with 2,000 grit sandpaper. Um, again, but a lot, you know, lighter, I guess you could say. You know, not for as long as amount of time because we're pulling that top layer off with a thousand. Um, so let me get the rest of this stuff sanded and uh, we'll come back and I'll show you the rest of this. Thirty minutes of sanding or so, and we've got a pretty smooth surface. No, it doesn't shine anymore, but we know that, right? So got it all. Sand it out to to where I'm happy with it. Let's put it that way. Um, again, it's not going to be, you know, the most amazing thing. But watch what happens when we put a wheel to this thing. So I'll show you guys what I'm working with. If I can get the wheel over here. 
And I've already cleaned it with glass cleaner, by the way, so it's nice and clean. But this is a green wheel from Home D uh, sorry, it's from Harbor Freight. Um, it's this medium foam polishing pad, and it fits really well, man. I'm so happy with the way these things adhere to the backing plate. Um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, and then I'm using this, which you can also get at Harbor Freight, 100 Pro Speed Compound, so uh, Meguiar's 100. So you got to be careful with this stuff because it will pull off some paint if you're not careful. Um, but I'm going to put a little bit on here like that. Just stash this thing somewhere. It's probably a bad idea, but we're going for it. And we're just going to move it around a bit and with some pressure a decent amount of pressure for the first three passes we're gonna go over this area like I said decent amount of pressure and then we're gonna let up and kind of let the polisher do the last two passes so three passes <laughs> Guys can already see the difference. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Good terry towel. Wipe off the excess. And looky, looky there. Look how shiny that paint is. So cool. Still got some fine scratches in it, so I'm going to go one more time um, from the sanding. I can't show you guys that. You're not going to see it on camera. So yeah, I'll take my word, but I'm going to go over it again and I'm going to do the rest of the fender and, uh, and then this will pretty much be done as far as fenders. Woo, that looks good. Hey, how are you? I can see myself. Okay, cool. So what's the saying? Um, I think it's no victory without sacrifice. And uh, while we have some victory today, boy, is there a lot more work to do. But check it out. How good does that look? Because I think it looks awesome. I am so happy with the way that came out. It, it looks amazing. So patina on the hood, shined up. I washed the Jeep, obviously. But now the fenders and the grill pop like we need them to. You know, it's a, it's a good color. There's not huge scratches everywhere. I don't know what that is. Maybe you have to buff that out. I don't, I'm not sure what I did there. Um, but holy crap, it's so nice. It's so much better than it was before. Here, here's how it was before. So what do y'all think? Y'all like it 
like this do y'all like it with the chrome grill and scratches everywhere <laughs> now the hood obviously has some issues but i mean it's you know it's a it's true to form so it is what it is um i still got to put this thing back together so while we do have a pretty significant issue with uh a head gasket being blown yeah this thing's got a either a cracked head or a blown head gasket i just verified it i let it run for a little while you know try to burp some cooling out of the system it started getting real hot the manifold over there started being 500 degrees on the little gauge here in fact let's you know just look at it see what it is now I wonder how much it's cooled off in 15 seconds there's 400 degrees 380 360 and we're at 200 up here by the thermostat turned the thing off and it just absolutely erupted which that sucks that sucks really bad um i'm gonna put the jeep back together at least first so i need to put the windshield back on all the little trinkets and things to that extent as far as like the rear tire mount thing for the back the uh i mean all turn signals headlights and stuff like that and i actually have a really cool headlight project for it which i was hoping to be able to use a lot sooner than now but we'll we'll put them in and i'll show you that it's actually putting a set of toyota headlights in this thing that are updated for today's standards so i'm looking forward to that um i think it looks fantastic i do want to do some more wet sanding on the body eventually but we have to be careful because if you see places like here I don't know what they did here but they tried to paint something i mean it's pretty obvious but uh yeah, especially right here look at that um they didn't do a great job with it put this whole side i don't know what they did to this side this whole side needs to be painted maybe i'll do that maybe i'll do that because that'll be three or four cans of paint <clears throat> a couple hundred extra bucks right um this side's a whole lot better as far as true to color because this is original paint so but i'm happy with how it came out like i said this is a ged of paint jobs and uh for the amount of work that went into it the result is is pretty awesome and that looks a little better on camera than it does in person i guarantee but that's the way that it should be in my opinion so okay let's shut it down and make plans for fixing that thing later it's probably going to go back behind the bel air and hang out and think about what it's did for a little while um because but there's nothing wrong with the bell air it doesn't need a bath which i don't know if i'll do today because it's <clears throat> gonna be 100 degrees out and uh unless i do that early in the morning it's probably not going to happen so um might have a pretty cool little cruise next weekend to brenham um which is probably the day that this video is coming out we're gonna head to brenham um and and there's a like a city square and we're going to be meeting with a whole bunch of people so i might film that and bring you guys along break up a little bit of the content for a little while take a break from the jeep and uh you know see how that works out i'm kind of looking forward to that a bunch of my friends are probably going which always makes a really really good time so we're going to check that out um other than that well need to get to work on some other things for a little while i think definitely take a break from the jeep uh, which I said that already, um, but that's just because I'm pretty upset about all that. So i uh, got some nitrous to put on the Dakota, which we're not quite there yet. Uh, I do need to have some wiring stuff to fix on the Nova, which I'd like to do pretty sooner or later. Um, the Bel Air is going to get some work, but not for a little while yet. We're going to bag this thing. Uh, that's the plans. Eventually, we're going to put this thing on the ground as low as we can go. And uh, also do some air conditioning and some stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and Greg's supposed to be coming in in a couple days, and we're going to do the fuel system on the Typhoon. So I think I am going to catalog that whole video um, because, you know, not a lot of people do a full fuel system on it. It's going to be E85 compliant. Um, so all PTFE line, going back to the pump and stuff like that. So that'll be good. All right. Well... 
obviously we have a lot going on. We've got a lot of projects to kind of move on to. So come hang out with us. If you're new to the channel, we're not just about Jeeps. We're not just about Corvettes. Uh, we do have a lot of Dakota content, but that's okay. Because who, who, who does? Because it's not a very common vehicle. Um, so come hang out with us. You'll find something interesting. Eventually, that speaking of Dakota content, that one out there, or, or if you can see it out there, it's going to get a V10. And that might be sooner than later because I don't know. Maybe I need to change it up a little bit. But uh, come hang out with us. Please consider subscribing if I didn't say that already. Um, if you have subscribed, again, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for checking out the videos, especially the ones that check it out every Saturday because I try to have these videos, videos out every Saturday morning about 7 a.m. Central Time. So I usually schedule them for that. Uh, other than that, have a great weekend. Stay cool. Take care of yourself. And uh, we'll see you next time. Until next time, y'all be good.